So where do you get good records then? The county courthouses, the original source of the data. And so that means if you're in, in Tarrant County, in Fort Worth, you go to the Tarrant County Courthouse. If you're in Travis County, you go to the, the, the courthouse in, down in, in Austin, or even if you're down in Webb County, you gotta go to the county courthouse in, in Laredo. That's, that's where you get the records. There are over 3,300 counties in the United States, something like 6,500 courthouses of different jurisdiction levels in the United States. So you can see why there's no such thing as a national criminal database, because they don't all report. Most of them, the overwhelming majority don't. But you've got to look where the person's lived, worked, attended school to get a good criminal history on them. You've got to go in those county courthouses and search those live records. One other thing, people say, well, we check it on, an, on their internet site. Some counties have good internet websites. Collin Denton County and uh, Dallas County, they have good real-time internet sites so that if, some, if a case is filed this morning, it shows up on their website. But a lot of counties don't. What they do is they batch the data out to the, uh, to the county website once a month, once a week, something like that. Some only report convictions. They don't show pending cases or dismissed cases. Uh, there are a lot of different things, so you've really got to be careful when you're relying on any of the internet-based records. Another thing a lot of people do is they say, well, we just, we run a small background check, we just check where the person lives right now. We're, you know, we're, we're based here in, in Waco, so we're going to check <laughs> McLennan County's records. Well, the problem with that is people move. We find that on average, uh, we, we search three and a half counties for every person. Who, and when we're doing a 10 year history. So the average background check that we run has three and a half counties when we're going back a minimum of 10 years. And here's what happens. The Boys and Girls Club uh, of Fort Worth, uh, the Panther City branch, had, uh, they hired this charming guy, Jacob Muniz. And I, uh, these bad guys, I get them all confused. Okay, Jacob was, uh, they, he, they did a background check in Tarrant County and they ran a state criminal records database on him and nothing came back. They put him to work as a gang intervention counselor. Well, what they didn't realize was that he was currently at that time on parole till 2043 for sex and violent offenses. And he's working with adolescent girls and ends up in, within about a year, year and a half, I think, having relationships with two of them. Police get involved when an outcry is made and um, police realize that, hey, he's got a criminal record out of Corpus Christi, Nueces County. And he had been in prison, they paroled him to where I think his mother lived in Tarrant County, they paroled him to Tarrant County. Checking Tarrant County's records, nothing there. And uh, of course this is another situation where the organization uh, got a lot of bad press and uh, there was a lawsuit, it was uh, settled quietly and the case was sealed, but they paid money or their insurance company paid money and they lost prestige in the industry and worst of all, these adolescent girls were injured. And finally, the federal criminal background check, federal records, the records out of the federal courthouses, that's a completely different court system. Uh, most employers don't run these records and I'll tell you that only about one and a half percent of the criminal records we report to our clients come out of the federal courts. But every time we report one to a, one of those records to a client, they wanted to know about it. Because those are you know, interstate drug crimes, gun crimes, um, all kinds of human trafficking stuff, any, anything that's a federal offense, uh, insurance fraud, arson, a lot of those things land in federal court with no records at the county level. That's what well, I hear a lot. Well, I mean, it's true, if they got a federal case, something's gonna show up at the county, and that's just not the case. Um, the feds take jurisdiction and, and the cases get prosecuted at the federal level. Computer crimes, cyber crimes, all those things, those are all at the federal level. You know, so you find Michael Vick, find all kinds of, you know, he's in the federal system. Uh, federal porn charges, things like that, that's all at the federal level. It's a um, small percentage of the records, but uh, with the exception of, of uh, littering on an Indian reservation, my clients always wanted to know what those federal cases were. Another thing that I, I would I'd garner that a lot of you all are doing is you're limiting your searches to, uh, to seven years. We do a seven year criminal history background check. I hear that a lot. And you need to look at the language in your, relation, in your agreement with your, with your screening vendor. 
because your background screening vendor may only be reporting cases for the last seven years regardless of what they find. So they may see a 10 year old conviction and not be reporting it to you. It is not uncommon in the industry to do that. And you want to know if somebody's had a conviction. And so what you should be doing is searching a certain number of years back, we, we recommend 10, and searching all those jurisdictions and any records that they find regardless of the age, if they can legally be reported, they should report them to you. And here's what happens when you don't. FedEx Kinko's hired this guy and when you see the side profile and the front profile, you know that's He's had a bad day. Um, the, um, they hired him to work the front counter at a Kinko's up in the Northeast. And well, uh, they ran a background check on him, background screening company, reported him, him as clear. And well, it turns out he's got a side business doing home computer stuff for people, like setting up home networks and doing some computer training. And it, it seems that when they went back and looked at it, all his customers were families with adolescent boys. And what would happen is a mom would come in with her, her, her teenage son, they'd work on the computers, they'd rent some computer time at Kinko's, he'd get to talking to them, build a relationship, and say, you know, I could set your wireless, net, your internet connection up at home for you, or I could come show you how to do this at home. And he starts, and these people unsuspectingly let him in their homes. And uh, there were, I think, two or three adolescent boys who were uh, sexually assaulted. Uh, by him while he was in their own home, while they you know, in their own homes. Now Kinko's got sued and the federal court found that this was so far outside of his, his responsibility, his scope and duties, that uh, they, uh, they want, you know, that Kinko's wasn't responsible for this action. But this was in an all over the news up there. And again, this is something that they didn't know. Maybe they would have hired him anyway. I don't know. But the fact that they ran a background check and it came back clear should have been the most troubling piece of that. Oh, and the name of his company was Facts and Fantasy. Is that not creepy? I mean, somebody hands me a card that says that and says they want to teach my kid to use a computer. I don't think so.